our community. Um, this is Coach Jennifer. It seems like it's been forever since I have been on a live event, so I'm happy to be back. I also have Coach Kate and Barbara. So you all are absolutely in for a treat tonight with Miss Barbara and <laughs> And also hearing her story. And of, of course, as soon as I go live, I get a frog in my throat. But tonight we are going to be hitting on challenges that we are facing by socializing. And we're going to be reviewing some recipes, tips, and tricks to help you make it through. Because we know having weddings, birthdays, and other social events like the Super Bowl that's coming up can make it really challenging to stay on track in phase one if you're trying to stay in the box and even manage your calories if you're in phase two. And during times like these, it's often not realistic to avoid the event altogether. I know, Barbara, you have some great examples of sometimes that you just weren't able to avoid it. And we don't want you to be hermits and live um, you know, at home until you get to your goal weight. And after almost two years of being in a pandemic, we all really feel like we need some social interaction. We need some human interaction. Um, and we have a lot planned to go through over our next 45 minutes. And we are gonna be hearing from Barbara, her story and get her tips that she has used that have been very successful for her while she's been socializing in phase one. And um, also now kind of what she's planning on doing now that she's in phase two and she's still going to face these socializing events. Um, so, yeah, so Jen, we have yeah. some some great folks who are joining us. Uh, start with some of our regulars. So nice to see Bob. Wonderful to see Jennifer. Uh, we have Keith who attended my group this morning. Double dose of HMR and, and Coach and Kate. Kate. I love it. <laughs> and um, really want to give an extra warm welcome to Francine getting ready to start mm -hmm. her HMR journey. Oh, and then welcome. also Linda okay. day one. Oh, wow. Some Good new for you. You guys are in the right place. You are. And so be ready because we are going to be sharing how you can find some delicious recipes, um, strategies that maybe you wouldn't have considered yourself while you're socializing. So have those pens and papers ready so that you don't forget some things that really stand out to you during this event. Um, and make sure as you're joining us to continue to say hello, because um, we love to know who's joining us on our events. Event. Um, and make sure. So let's dive into you, Barbara. So I know folks are really excited to get to know you a little bit. And uh, sometimes people just want to hear your journey. Um, if you wouldn't mind painting a picture for us of what was life like? before HMR, was there a moment that kind of had you dive in and decide to make a change? Yeah, well, okay, there, I, uh, I've been heavy my whole life. I, I, was a, I was a heavy teenager. I was, a, you know, and heavy in college. And so I've, I've never been, you know, what I would consider or anybody else would consider a healthy weight. I mean, I wasn't obese when I was younger, but I, I was very heavy. And of course, as the years went on, uh, I'm a widow. I you know, a lot of stress and things going on. And I just continually put more weight on. In fact, when I, uh, when I retired a few years ago, uh, I was the highest weight I'd ever been. I'd never had a problem with my health before, but when I retired, I, I had high blood pressure, which I had never had before. So that, but even that wasn't enough to still say, oh, you, you really need to really take some serious weight off. It was enough to just take a little bit off, but um, I shared with y'all before that I, um, I show horses. I have uh, Tennessee walking horses and that's my passion. I've, uh, over 40 years, I've been doing that. I've been riding and showing horses my whole life. And I found that I was very upset with myself. I, I owned, I had about six horses, but two of them, I, I wouldn't even ride because I was overweight and I, they were young and I didn't need to be on them. I was so heavy. And um, it, it was kind of an epiphany to me. I, a friend of mine had just lost uh, 40 pounds on a, on a different weight loss uh, program. And I was like, okay, she can do it. I, I can do it. So I was at, uh, I, was at a ho I was at a horse show in a hotel room. I couldn't fit in any of my clothes. I couldn't, you know, I just the thought of getting, I had one horse who was a little nutty and I kept thinking, 
if he throws me, I'm, <laughs> this is going to be a bad thing. So I, you know, my balance wasn't great and everything else. And so I, while I was sitting there in this hotel room, I was like, I, this is it. I'm done. I'm going to do it. And I thought to myself, I can do anything for a year. I, I didn't set a goal weight at that time. I just said, I can do anything for a year. So I started looking into this plan that she was on and it was just so can't have this, can't have that. Uh, and in my, yeah, I felt like she was really starving herself. She was just hungry all the time. And as I'm looking on the internet, HMR came up and I began to research HMR through Google and it just appealed to me. So not just uh, what it was going on then, but also mostly about phase two as a, as a widow, I, you know, I, I mean, by myself, it's difficult to cook for your, you know, just by yourself. So I was, I was like, I, this just sounds so good to me. I, I think it would really work for me both to lose weight and keep to, to keep it off because I've lost weight before on other plans on that mm -hmm. lovely plan where you count points, you know, where they teach you to cheat yourself. So <laughs> But they don't teach you anything about, um, they don't teach you anything about how to eat or what you're eating. They simply say, figure this up, eat what you want, and then don't eat the rest of the day or, or whatever. But and, HMR oh, is so great. It is. And it's meant to be that you found us on a Google search. And so, Barbara, you joined us in October of 2020. And you have lost 125 pounds down and still losing in phase two. So let me share your before and after, which we'll show this multiple times tonight, but just for our viewers who are joining us. So this is a before and after of Barbara. Um, we have 124, I think you're like 124.7 uh, something. So yeah, I, I yeah. lost, I, I, I went lower and then I, in my journey in phase two, since I've been there a month, I've been up and down the same two pounds. That's okay. I'm not concerned about the weight right now. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned about figuring out, you know, what, what I need to eat and what, but I, yeah, it's been, it's been 15 months I've been on HMR and to me at 62. You know, I hear people say, oh, I'm, I'm older. I can't do this. And I'm like, I'm 62. Hello. Uh, you can do this. You're, you can do this. Absolutely. And Barbara, it's such a great job. I, I think a lot of folks can relate to having a moment where you realize you can't do your passion. Uh, and just in getting a chance to get to know you, it was just so crystal clear how um, much you love your horse shows. Mm -hmm. And then also just what are the chances on the Google search? So um it, it has transformed your life. And Definitely. one of the things that I'm curious about is what was attractive in particular about phase one and HMR? What did you love so much about it? While I was in it, while I was in phase one, um, A, the fact that I was never hungry. I, I, I 15 months, I, I have not been hungry a single day on HMR. Um, I also, I think some people can relate to this, I get comfort in the control that I have from HMR. I, I love the fact that I know what I can eat. There's, to me, HMR is the healthiest alternative because it's not no carb, no this, no, no. It's not no anything. It's here, put this, you're going to have this later. So let's have some of it now. All the entrees have a pasta or a rice or something, you know, for the most part. So it's not no carb, it's here's how much carb you need to have, you know, that's it's less, it's stuff. So that appealed to me, the whole, whole the well-roundedness of HMR that, um, you know, it wasn't, because I, I see all these people, the thing that scares me, the people that have weight loss surgery, and then they, they don't realize that then they can only eat this much, or the people that, oh gosh, I do great on keto, but then I'm off two days and, and I've gained five pounds, you know, so. The whole fact that HMR is is so healthy and balanced. I think balance maybe Kate might be one of the things that appeals to me the most, the balance of it. Yeah. Um, one thing that was neat in looking through your history, um, you did the healthy solutions diet, folks. So that's the minimum of three shakes, two entrees, and five veggie fruits each day. Mm -hmm. Uh, but along Barbara's 125 pound weight loss, there were many days that you were doing a fourth shake, a fifth shake, a third entree. Um, you do like seven plus veggie fruits every single day. Every day. Uh, so how amazing is it to have found a weight loss program that you don't have to be hungry? 
it, it's crazy. I, I never do less than probably seven to nine veggies and fruits a day. Um, and the whole fact that I, that that's, it's, you know, the first thing people say is, oh, well, you really, I know they say you can eat potatoes, but don't eat potatoes and don't eat corn and don't eat. And I'm like, yes, eat it. It's not, it's yeah. not going to, yes. In fact, I, I found at the beginning that days I eat potatoes, I, I lost more weight. So um, I, I do, it, it changed my whole mindset towards food mm -hmm. uh, right. to this healthy alternative where half of your plate, you know, they talk about the government guidelines, half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables and a quarter of protein and a quarter of grains and the rest. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. how great is it to turn your mind around? And that's what HMR did for me. I learned to cook uh, and I would say, okay, I have these veggies. I want this, this, and this today. And I start with my veggie base, which for me is normally mushrooms, onions, and cabbage. I love that. So I would start that. And then I would like, okay, what am I in? What do I, am I in the mood for today? Is it, you know, do I want an Italian entree on top of that? So I put Italian spices. Do I want a soup? So do I go with, you know, adding broth or soup to that? So I, I really found myself cooking at least when I was in phase one, I cooked at least one meal a day. And then the other meal, I would just have a salad and an entree. So pretty easy. And one thing that you mentioned when we spoke, when you first started HMR, I think we all come to doing the program with our own thoughts and kind of thinking of, well, this is what's going to work for me, or this is what our culture says we should and shouldn't do. Right. But you really... You were, I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to embrace the program. You definitely did that with more is better um, to be satisfied. And also too, do you mind to share kind of when you were in phase one, you set your intention every single morning, like before you even got out of the bed. So do you mind to share pe with people what that looked like for you? Yeah, uh, I have to thank my phase one coaches. Uh, Jet, Jet Acosta was my phase one coach for the longest time. And, and then Don uh, was my last phase one coach. But when I was in phase one, I before I ever got out of bed in the morning. Now I'm an everyday weigher. It's okay for some people. Some people should not weigh every day. It's good for me because I I'm a teacher by profession. I'm uh, I'm retired now. I still teach part time. But that whole why did it happen is a big thing to me. So I do weigh every day before I ever got out of bed every single morning. I pick up my uh, phone. I pull up my HMR app. I put down that I've had. Because I have the same thing every morning. I'm, I know I'm boring, but I have my cereal with a banana and, I, and a glass of water, and then I have coffee. So I would check those things off, and I would check stayed in the box in, in mm -hmm. phase one. I would check that every single morning because if I went out of the box, I had to physically uncheck, uncheck that. Uncheck it. So, yeah, I have so, clients so in phase one that do from that. From the too. very beginning, that was a big. I for the first six months, I never went out of the box. I, I did not touch a toe out of the box for six months and then I wow. only did because I traveled but but why 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 should you you can make anything you want out of these foods you can now my friends will tell you that that one of my favorite things to say when when they're like oh well I had to eat this and I'm like you could get it at the gas station if it's a food you can get at the gas station do you really need to eat it is it really worth maybe setting back your your get your losses if you can get it at the gas station and since October, you have never missed a group. I know we were noticing that since October 26th, you have not missed a group. And so I know that's very different for, you know, using that coach. So how has that supported you? I know you've spoke highly about the Facebook community and some of that accountability, but um, what, what value has the coaching brought to you? Um, I, you know what, and you say that Jennifer, and I did not even realize that uh, when I, uh, until y'all said, until, you know, because y'all have a, uh, all the records I did not realize that I hadn't missed one but it was important to me um I, I think I think it's difficult especially as a, a woman whose children are both grown and you tend your whole life you you all have smaller children you're you're used to putting yourself last your spouse or your significant other comes first your children come first your job comes first everything comes first and as I think so many of us tend to be nurturers or caregivers and we don't put ourselves first mm -hmm. and that was I, I began to do that and, and the fact that you need to give yourself permission to not feel selfish by doing that and yeah. so I did a Monday morning group and I did it first thing at eight o'clock Monday morning and it started my week off right 
all weekend, I was like, you got to weigh in. You've got to, you know, you've got to stay on track. You want to make sure you're getting your minimums in. So it kept me through the weekend. And Monday morning, it started my, my week off right with my accountability. I just, you know, I was like, to look at it. Coaching is vital. I, I know some of you are like, oh, I don't need a coach. Coaching makes you look at what you've actually done. When you look at, even if you just go to the coaching tab, on on your on your um, app and and see you can look right there and see have I met my minimums have I met my PA um, you know what have I done so I love that and there were actually sometimes you had conflicts for your group but you made up your group yeah. right so. I I have a friend who's just now who's just really getting into her coaching and even though she's been doing HMR for a few months and she's like, I, I'm doing this. I, and I can see, I can feel the commitment in her where, you know, before it was, it was like, you know, not as strong, but now she's like, oh, I missed my coaching. So I made it, you know, I made it up. I'm so proud of her because, okay. you know, I mean, and HMR makes it so easy. Drop down to the bottom and choose one to make up. So yeah. So, yes, several of your friends are joining too, and <laughs> they didn't find HMR from Google. They said, I found it by Barbara. So Barbara, you know, definitely <laughs> getting the gang all in here. And so I love it. Oh, buddy. And I think your friend wrote down 55 pounds so far. There Barbara, you go. The See? Refer. Amazing. It so is. we need to dive into our topic of the evening, and that is socializing while on the program. And we do not want to have our plans be the reason to step away from our weight loss goals. So this is going to be a really important time for us to hear some strategies, next steps, and certainly hear from you too, Barbara, uh, what you did to tackle these events successfully. Right. Yeah. And so for if you're just joining us tonight, we just heard from Barbara. Um, and she has been with HMR since October 2020, down 125 pounds. And she is helping us to um, talk about how we can get through these social challenges that we're going to be facing in the coming weeks. And um, so we're going to be talking about, you know, whether you have weddings coming up. I saw many of you are going to be traveling, you're attending weddings, we're going to have birthday special occasions, whether, um, where it's going to be really challenging um, to stay on track, but it's not impossible. And that's what we're here to help you with. And we know that being away from home or just out of your daily routines can make staying on track so much more challenging than what it already is when you're trying to change your behaviors. And the best way to be successful is to have those strategies that you can really rely on when you are in these tough social situations. And in preparation for this event, we asked our Facebook community, what are you most concerned with um, with upcoming social events? And um, many of you had a lot of challenges. We had birthdays, parties with friends, road trips, and Valentine's and the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Super Bowl this weekend. So, um, yeah, Barbara, so in phase one, when you're thinking of these social events, why is it so important to stay in the box um, instead of just saying, you know what, I'm just going to take a break. It's, it's Mamaw's, you know, 93rd birthday. I'm just going to take a break. But why is it so important to kind of change your thinking and still think I can stay on track and still do this? I, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that that's something that we talked about that was talked about in Facebook Live a couple of weeks ago, and that was that this is your new normal. Um, you know, I, I think there's so many of us that come to HMR because we have a, a, a lot of weight to lose. You know, we don't need to just lose that 20 pounds. Uh, you know, we're talking people who need to lose hundreds, you know, 100 pounds or, or 80 pounds or 60 pounds. And, and the whole thought that, okay, I'll just go back to what I was eating before. I'll lose the weight and I'll just go back to what I was doing before. Whereas HMR kind of gives you the, the tools to check, turn that around. And this is how I eat now. This is what I do now. And so you're going to go to social events. I mean, that's, that's all it is. And I, I think the one thing I took away from that is that you care more about what you're eating and drinking than anybody around you does. Yeah. I, I think we feel like there's this spotlight on us. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, they're having a glass of wine and I'm not. Okay. Right. Well, have a glass of ginger ale, have a, mm -hmm. you know, 
have a, it's, it's, it's really not. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, to me, food tastes so much better now than it did before. If you would have told me when I started this, that I would eat a salad with absolutely no dressing on it and enjoy it, I would be like, you're, you're nuts. But mm -hmm. I, but I do a little salt and pepper and I, because your taste buds just are, you taste things uh, differently. So, um, but you can, you can find a way around any of those things, no matter yeah. where you are. Yeah. And one of the biggest things in phase one is learning that tolerance to do something different, because when you get to where you want to be at your goal weight, if you haven't learned the skill to tolerate being in the box in phase one, what makes you think in phase two, you're going to be able to tolerate to do something different than what exactly. you've always done. So it's really important to develop the habits and we have the tools to help you to do that. Not just for phase one, it's important in phase one, but really we want to help you to not have to lose a significant amount of weight over and over and over again. Um, yeah. And so that's why it's important to learn that tolerance and stay in the box so that you have the skills later because the challenges aren't going to go away. Um, we know that. We know they're going to be multiplying. So it is really important to learn how to tolerate it in phase one and stick to being in the box instead of negotiating. And I know, Kate, um, you have some travel and birthdays coming up, too. And um, so I, I just of, love Barbara kind of painting a picture of the new normal. Yeah. Um, this is my new normal. You know, when I was even reading John F's post, I had a pizza luncheon and brought my own lunch today to stay on track. Um, John, I'd love for you to post for the audience your success in the program because not everyone knows your story. But if we just do the average American normal, if John every day grabs a pizza at the lunch event, we will be where we were before. And that's not where we want to be. So we embrace the new normal to bring our food. Uh, even if it's a little bit different and um, really just see what's possible for us. So we're going to hear a lot of tips as to what we can do, even despite the challenges. I, I brought my bag, Kate. You asked me to bring my bag. <laughs> I love the horses. So well, what's in the bag? Back up. Yeah, what's in the what's bag? In the bag so we can pop back into you. So, um... Kate, wanted me, Kate wanted me to bring my bag. This is my bag that stays in my truck. Yes, I drive a, a big truck. And it stays in here 24 seven. And so I have a chili and I have a bottle of water. And so Barbara, say why you have a turkey chili. Why is that turkey chili important? Um, gosh, I love the turkey chili on everything. If you go out, you can have it. First of all, when I go to work shows, I, I can put it on the dashboard of the car in the sun in the morning and it's warm by lunchtime. Mm -hmm. uh, if I go to a restaurant, I can order a baked potato and have uh, the some people say, oh, I couldn't eat that. It's cold. You know what? You're not, you're not living to eat anymore. You know, you're, you're eating to live. So uh, a hot baked potato will warm it up or, mm -hmm. or whatever. So it makes a great salad um, dressing. Yeah. Or yeah. order a salad, throw it on the yeah. top. You're getting your minimums in and you know, you're still sticking to the plan. I have a shaker cup. These are my favorite shaker cups now. So <laughs> I have that. I have some puddings. I have some 80s and some fifth, some 70s because you can make pudding right in the container. All you got to do is just pour some water in. I have, uh, that's some 500. And I have plenty of uh, crystal light and different okay. things like this. So Hawaiian punch. Okay. So I can make my shake be anything I want. A bar. This bar has seen better days. Perhaps we should we should change that. <laughs> it, it, it'll still taste the same. It will taste the same. It's just a little flat. And yeah. some napkins and a fork. So yep. it stays in my truck all the time. And in fact, my mm -hmm. friends that are on there will tell you that sometimes they get into my bag when we go out. I was going to say, you better keep your car locked because some of these folks might <laughs> grab so the like, We know Barbara has an emergency stash. And so how many times have you just ran out the door when an emergency happens or you just run out the door and forget? And it's great to have that emergency stash and traveling. So um, Kate, you ready yeah. to... Um, Kind of yeah, switch so, gears. So we know we're going to a social event. You're going to a social event. Now what are we going to do? It can come with a whole host of emotions. Right. It's difficult. We'll play a little game, my friends, to talk about what is more challenging when you're going to a social event. The food or the people? 
So state so your case, everybody. I'd love for you everybody. guys to state your case. You're going to a social event. It has a whole host of emotions. What is more difficult, the food or the people? So take a moment to post in the feed. Uh, I've thought a lot about this question. Yeah. My two and a half year old is quite spirited, I will say. Uh, sometimes when I get to events of pressures on, she might treat the walls like they are painting options. Uh, so it's a little stressful to go into an event with her, but I have to say uh, my family is amazing. For me, if I were to state my case, food or people, it's the food. Uh, it's all the food that's there. I'm at the event for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. I can kind of let my guard down as it goes on. And then after, it's tough for me having been around the food. So I'm going to state my case of the food. What yeah. about you, Jen? Gosh, I've thought about this too. And I think it's the people. <laughs> um, because, and not just because... <sighs> the people in their comments, because I know I've been doing this work for a very long time and you get kind of um, just some snood remarks about, are you supposed to be eating that? Or um, of course, Jennifer's going to be eating healthy. She's eating like, or are you still on that diet? And um, it's just really hard to like. Defend yourself. It. Yeah. Defend yourself all the time. And it's even harder on phase two when like, it is an option to have something, but like people keep asking you, like, you sure you don't want to have that? You sure you don't want to enjoy this? Well, of course I want it. Um, so I think it's the people and we're seeing a lot of mix, the people. Yeah. Yes. But the, but the so, food seems to be leading the charge. What about you, Barbara? I'm yeah. breaking the tie. I'm saying the food. Sorry. It, I, so I'm older than you two and I don't care what the people, I, I, you know, it's not that I don't care what my friends think. There's a lot of things that I care about. I yeah. care about people, but it's the food. I, it, it took me admitting that I have an unhealthy relationship with food my whole life. And just like if I was an alcoholic and I had to be around alcohol uh, or anything else, uh, my healthy relationship that I have now with food has to be a priority for me. Yeah. So yeah. I, and, and I find myself since I've been in face. Uh, to, uh, or yeah, like when I let, would let myself, you know, eat and, I, and I'm thinking you're eating too fast. You're eating too, you know, I, the first thing you think is I'm going back to those old habits and, um, you know, stop back up, slow down. And, um, so it, it's the same thing. It's my, you know, do you really want to eat that? And, and if you're, you know, that's what I said, do I want a donut from the corner? No. If I'm in New Orleans on a trip and I'm having beignets, then, then yes, I want to find a way to fit that into my into my eating and with my friends and and do some more PA and you know put on my sneakers, strap on my sneakers, and walk some more. So yeah, um, so you for kind me, of become a calorie yeah. snob uh -huh. almost. You you have to become a calorie snob in what's worth your calories. And I too, like you now, Barbara, I've gotten to the point where I'm okay to say you know, back off or just let it roll off my back now, but it can be challenging. And I know many people are, um, it, it's tough. And so I, I, yeah. I feel so bad. I feel so bad for those people who don't have family support. I, I, yeah. I, as there are, there are plenty of those people out here, out there, mm -hmm. their spouse or their significant other seems to undermine them. They're like, Oh, yeah. you're not going to try some of this. And I'm like, I don't yeah, let's be support. And I That's know that's what's great about our community too, right? Yes. If you don't have that support at home, we have that support that we can give you. And um, yeah, absolutely. And um, so we, we've, I know we've heard it, like I can't not have, you know, fill in the blank or I'm going to this resort. I can't not eat. Well, you have an example, Barbara, and so I'm going to pull it up here. So do, do you mind to share while I'm getting these pictures up? Um, I'm, I'm going to go on vacation soon with Barbara. Yeah, right? Okay, well, this was a tag along vacation of mine with my two best friends who I'm sure are, are commenting on here. And we tagged along on, uh, on her, uh, va on her uh, work vacation. And so we were at the Ritz uh, on Amelia uh -huh. Island. And uh, so two of us played while she had to work, but uh, <laughs> we took along our HMR. We took, we took one blender for the three of us. We took one 
uh, warmer for the three of us because I know this is surprise you, but the Ritz they don't have microwaves in the room, yeah. and um, so but they do have refrigerators. So we hit the grocery store as soon as we got there, and we got as you can see there we got fresh fruit, carrots, yep. little things of guacamole. We got the can pop, pop cans. Yeah, and no um, and th so there we were on the beach having our little picnic with with HMR. And you know what? We came back and, and did it bother us a bit? No, not at all. It was in fact it was fun. It was fun doing it with friends. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was it was we planned ahead. We took our food with us. We, uh, you know, took our blender, we took a blender with us, we took all those things with us, and um, it, of course, it was more fun doing it with people, but mm -hmm. still, you it's can possible. do, possible. you can do, possible. you can do anything, like I said, yeah. you can do anything for a year, and you can do anything that you decide to. Yeah, yeah, and I know that we just heard, you know, from many of you, like, what is more challenging for you? We were having you state your case, the food, or the people. And there are so many parts of social events that can be challenging, whether it is the food or the people that is the bigger challenge for you. But the best way to get through that successfully um, or successfully through a social event in phase one or phase two is to have those strategies. And we just heard some from Barbara. Um, and it's really important to have these strategies in your back pocket that you can rely on. So we want to get started um, with strategies. So be ready to write, be ready to share um, things that you have done during social events that have really supported you to still stay on track in phase one, whether you're trying to be in the box or you're in phase two and you're trying to manage your overall calories. Um, so Barbara, when you were in phase one, um, it sounds like planning ahead was the biggest key for you. And you shared um, a post about going to a birthday party for a friend at a Mexican restaurant. And can you kind of walk us through how you plan ahead and what you did for that event? Yeah, at, at that time I was still. This was a uh, this was a couple months ago, and I was still. Uh, so I, um, I don't tell anybody this, but for the first nine months, I didn't I didn't do hardly any PA other than my just uh, my regular stuff. But because I was so heavy, I and I live alone, and I frankly I was scared to do something where I might hurt myself because I don't, um, you know. And of course, there's plenty of things I could have done, but that's what I tell myself. So. Um, when I started walking, then I would up my PA. So if I knew I was going to be out, I ate before I went, I would have, I have my oatmeal for breakfast. That's what I have every single morning. And then mm -hmm. I, uh, I walked, I got my uh, PA in. I, 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 I can walk four miles in, uh, uh, in, in 70 minutes. I, um, and I, didn't like walking when I started, but I used my headphones. I listened to a book on Audible and 70 minutes passes in no time at all. I've done, I've done 400, uh, 400 PA and you know, it's, it's like nothing. So, and then right before I went, uh, and then I had a snack, um, usually, and then I, right before I went, I had a double entree. So my favorite double entree is mac and cheese and chili. I like to have chili mac. So Mm -hmm. um, I would have a double entree because I feel like I couldn't eat. I don't know. I, I get, there's plenty that I could, could probably eat two of, but so I had a double entree and I was like, I either won't eat it all at the party wow. or I will, um, you know, or I'll graze on something. And then I was pleasantly surprised when I got to the party and they had a, a salad, you know, they had, a, they had a little buffet kind of set up and I was able to have salad. I was able to have guacamole. I was able to have um, salsa beans, on my salad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, they had black beans. I was able to have that. Um, and you know, you, you'd just be surprised. And if you just mm -hmm. ask at a restaurant, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in this case, the stuff was already there, but I feel like in these days they need to conform to help you. I mean, if I was to go in and say, I have a peanut allergy, could you tell me what's in your food? Yeah. They would be like, oh my gosh, yes, you can't have this, you can't have that. Well, it's, it's basically the same thing. You, you know, I, this is what I need to eat or this is what, mm -hmm. and I think we need to get away from that stigma of, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm asking for them to serve me something different. Um, right. You know, 
We've got people who are gluten intolerant. We've got people, you know, mm -hmm. who are all these things. So yeah. there was um, a really awesome post recently in our phase two Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, just wanted to share a little bit. Denise B posted it and uh, she was going to a restaurant and she just walked through all of the steps that she took. She yeah. looked at the menu online. She researched the nutrition. She selected her items ahead of time and sides. She called to make sure that they would be able to accommodate her request. Mm -hmm. She had food before, like you had said, your double entree and she yeah. tracked it. And so phase one or phase two, kind of walking through that process of what you can do yeah. and be full and satisfied and still nail your goals. So uh, phase one, your example was phenomenal. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought Denise's was a great one in phase two. I've yeah, also, so things ahead of time. Oh, I've ahead. also done uh, where you're at a set, a set meal, like if you're at a wedding or if you're at, mm -hmm. you know, when they're coming to serve you, uh, mine was at a, uh, at a, at a charity event. And so when they came, I just said, because I knew they were going to serve steak. I mean, we were, we were, hello, I live in Fort Worth, Texas. Of course we have steak. So I just said, do you have any vegetarian or vegan options? They sure did. They always put some, oh, some back for that. Mm -hmm. So was I really in a box in phase one? No, that wasn't a big thing. But I was able to not eat the steak, which I would have gladly eaten all of. And I had a vegetarian, vegan option. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is, is that just ask, advocate for yourself. And so, right. um, lots of things that you can do ahead of time before you even go to the event, do your research. And now let's talk about your heading to an event. Um, you know, what can you specifically do to stay on track? So you're going to maybe a Super Bowl party or you're going to an event at someone else's house. Um, so one thing is you know, taking the HMR foods with you or calling the host ahead of time to see kind of what uh, foods you can bring or what foods they're going to have. Um, I always say, you know, veggie tray is always a great addition to any party or a fruit tray. And um, taking your own appetizers is really helpful. Um, we have some different recipes. And so um, Kate, while I'm getting the kind of the program website up, do you yeah. want to talk about some of the other kind of the drinks and the Absolutely, main dishes? Absolutely, yeah. Things? So um, I know drinks are challenging. I did see someone else uh, already posting this evening. I think it was Debbie. Alcohol being a challenge. Um, I feel like people are always carrying a cup. I like to have yeah. inspirational cups. This one says, not a day over fabulous. So I love it bring something in a cup. I have so many yummy drinks that I love. This is a diet Dr. Brown's black cherry. Um, bring something yummy. Of course, mm. you can put it in a pretty cup if you like. Um, and I also feel like everyone's always carrying some sort of whatever cup. And uh, I put mm -hmm. shakes in these. People don't even yeah. ask what they are. Although I'm yeah. happy to tell uh, this keeps my shake mm -hmm. nice and thick. Yeah, you guys same. have your drinks too. So yep. you want to have a, a strategy. And I also feel like it's a visual reminder of my goals. I'm yeah. sipping on my calorie free drink or my shake at the event and I'm reminded of my goal. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how we can find recipes. Yeah. And, you know, things that you can do beforehand are, you know, go into the website, our program website, hmrprogram.com, and you can go to support and then click on recipe. Oh, where to go? Click on recipes. And um, we were talking about, you can just kind of search through the recipes, or if you have, have specific ones that you want to, like an entree um, that you want to search, you can do mushroom. Yep. Um, for the mushroom risotto and you get all kinds of different um, mushroom risotto recipes, things to do um, with the, stuffed the mushroom. mushrooms, ravioli. Yep. And you can scroll down here and see stuff baby Bellas. Those are excellent. Um, and look to see if that's something that is on your diet program. You can do different you can search through healthy solutions. If this is the diet that you're on, you can go to that tab. And if you want to do specific um, entrees, shakes, you can do the filter and just apply. But there's so many different things um, that you can do as it relates to, let's see, shakes, entrees, fruits, and vegetables. 
I like to think about, you know, what would the event call for? And if mm -hmm. I traditionally had mac and cheese, I love the baked mac and cheese recipe yeah. on the site. It's a decision-free recipe, uh, our creamy mac and cheese soup, different spices. Um, yeah. Super Bowl Sunday, I plan to bring a turkey chili crock pot. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that might be popular at some Super Bowl events. And uh, yeah. I love mushrooms too. So like you were saying, Jen, you can search and then find a lot of different recipes that include items that you like. Yeah, and put it in like a Tupperware dish or whatever it is, um, take it in a casserole dish. Um, I'm sure, I know we've had many people say they took dishes that were made with HMR meal replacements and everybody loved them and they were gone. Um, so- I would love for our audience mm -hmm. to post anything you've ever brought to an event. Uh, yeah. If you have any recommendations. Yeah, it, it, it's great. It's great to turn your thinking around. And, and it's, mm -hmm. it's not about what you can't have. It's about what you can have. It, it's, it's unlimited. You can, when, you, when you say you can have any fruit or vegetable you want, okay, do you, do you really grasp the concept of, of what that means? Uh, my friend Frances, she, she took a big thing of coleslaw, you know, and she made it with skinny girl dressing and, you know, and, and, she, and, and she loved it. She's, she tells everybody. They didn't know that was diet food, you know, yeah. they, because they just were like, oh, your, your coleslaw is wonderful. So, yeah. and you know, my favorite thing, I, I, I'm a fat free sour cream. My friends will tell you a fat free sour cream addict. And, um, I mean, I just dumped the powdered ranch dressing in it, mix it up, throw it in the middle of the veggie tray. Not a single person eating that knows that that's not full leaded yeah. sour cream it's it's just as good and mm -hmm. uh, Barbara I'm glad you mentioned that um this is a favorite in my family the skinny girl poppy seed dressing yes um but we were looking at some nutrition menus the other day and I shared this example with you guys cheesecake factory the caesar salad it's lettuce maybe some parm croutons dressing mm -hmm. at 1270 calories yeah. largely from the dressing so mm -hmm. you could be at an event and just, you know, having some dressing and dip here and there and not even realize that hundreds, thousand plus extra calories are coming in. So yeah. that's where your dip, Barbara, or a dressing mm -hmm. can really save you. Yeah. 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 And um, taking, uh, taking it with you, those low calorie add-ins, and then also having set goals for the day. I know, Barbara, you do that quite a bit. You say you always have seven servings of fruits and vegetables. So if you have a, a social event, focus on what, like you said, what you can do. So set a high day with meal replacements. Challenge yourself. Like I'm going to shoot for seven meal replacements so I can be in the box or 10 servings of fruits and vegetables. Even set a physical activity go so that you can stay focused towards that versus, well, I can't have this and I can't have that. Just okay. focus on those things that you can have um, with I that. Like the, um, we have Coach Annika joining us in the feed mm -hmm. and I love the suggestion of the baked potato bar. Yes. Uh, salsa, avocado, hot sauce, tomatoes, onions, peppers, like so many yummy fixins. Mm -hmm. um, and Jen, when you're mentioning setting a specific goal, it's really yeah. crucial for me to set a goal for after. Yeah. I've been doing this work for many, many, many years and nothing mm -hmm. is more frustrating than getting through an event successfully yeah. only to stumble after. And yeah. I don't know if it's because the urgency is so high, the event is so long. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of like your guard is down, your stress is down, and uh, you don't want to then get into things that you don't want. So whether it be yeah. discard the leftovers, have a delicious shake recipe that you can look forward to an entree, just anything that you mm -hmm. can say yes to after. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, if you're in phase two, take a low calorie meal, snack or dessert. So if you're in phase one, make sure you have the appetizers, the drinks, the main dishes and the desserts that are in the box for you, take them with you. Same with phase two, control what you can control. Um, and, you know, definitely make sure you keep your records current. You also stay connected with the community. I know Barbara, you mentioned the accountability of showing, I, I'm gonna do this entree or I'm going out to eat and we're gonna do entrees while we're gone. So really staying connected with your community and, if you are finding any social situation too challenging, because I know we have some people who are in their first day, yeah. their first week, if you feel like you really need to get your feet under you, it's okay to say no to some events. I know some of them, we don't want you to say no to every single thing, but if you can go later, 
leave early or even say no, um, that may be helpful at that time so you can stay on track because we can't give in to every single challenge or you're never gonna get where you wanna be. Um, totally. So you do have to do some things different. And um, so we got a lot of, lot of tips for social events and staying on track. And I know um, Barbara, now that you're in phase two, it, you have a different approach to social events. And so what are some events that you have coming up that you're you know, most concerned with that you learned maybe some things that you want to do mostly just here. yeah mostly just just i'm i'm trying like i say i i took my phase one journey as an education as mm -hmm. what 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 works for me what doesn't work for me and right now in my phase two i'm like okay how many calories can i have because even though they say take your weight times you know that's how many calories you get that's it's not working for me and so i need a few less uh, less calories so it's just it's just taking what i've learned in in phase one and like i went to lunch with my mother-in-law yesterday and so I, I had the salad and i had it it had it with turkey and um and then i just had uh the pepper cheese, you know the little peppers and stuff on it because i'm happy to have those kind of peppers and things like that and, and that is good for me instead of a dressing i uh mm -hmm. You know, I found myself out today and uh, I just went to the salad bar and I grabbed some rotisserie chicken off the salad bar and all that stuff and the same thing, pickled okra and all those things where those, you know, those condiments uh, were better for me in phase two. So, um, you know, I have, I have some traveling to do. And so that's where when we go to horse shows, we don't eat uh at good times we eat very late at night you know we're up mm -hmm. early in the morning we're at a horse show where you, there's only snack bar food so you know i've got to plan ahead then to uh, take my you know take some food with me so that i do have a shake so that i can run back to the hotel and mm -hmm. get my blender and use one or something like that so your to-go bag will come handy when you do that <laughs> right i'll make i'll make oh are you kidding when i was in phase one and i'd be going to a horse show for five days I have a trolley that I take with me. I'm hauling this thing, this thing out of my truck with food and canned vegetables and everything else. And I get to one hotel and I get there and there's no microwave. And I was just like panicked. I'm like, what do there's no microwave. I'm what am I gonna I, I kid you not, ladies. I thought about oh, maybe I need to buy a microwave. I thought we had I people do that. <laughs> I, I was at Walmart and I just stopped and I went, have you lost your mind? You're you're in the middle of nowhere and you're you think you should buy that you need a, a microwave, microwave to stay on track. I purchased a travel blender at Family Dollar last week. <laughs> I live to tell. Yes. And the entrees, if you open them and eat them, they are room temperature. They are not cold. And I've consumed all of them room temperature. That's right. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a big Well, it was the oatmeal I was missing. So I do carry my Keurig single cup thing so that I could make hot water in that. Hot water. Because, oh, I love it. Yeah. I, we went to Disney World. Hey, I've been to Disney World in phase one, uh, but carried my entrees, carried my everything else, carried my add-ins for my oatmeal every morning, ordered bananas from the meal thing out there. I forgot the oatmeal. I, oh no. I had the bowls, I had the spoons, I had the salt, <laughs> I had the I had the bananas, I I had I forgot the oatmeal and I was devastated. But I made it through. You made it. I made it through, <laughs> and I and I did not gain any weight at, at Disney World. I, and I ate HMR. I, I balanced my food. So, I hope folks are reading through the feed because there's so much love and support for you. So many tips, um, and also physical activity as a strategy, uh, certainly both to offset calories, balance, but also just kind of stay in the game. So it seems like Tanya also wrote her plan: uh, ten thousand steps to get in on Sunday. Yeah. So should we wrap this up? I think so. You ready to bring it home? Uh, Barbara, it's been such a pleasure to have you join us tonight. Um, we are so proud of you and we really appreciate you sharing your successes. And let's face it, social events happen in phase one and phase two. And we really want to come up with a solid plan. So our hope is that everyone feels committed to take on a personal challenge at your next social event, uh, something you're doing before, during, or after. And uh, certainly if you 
are planning to do something or do, we would love for you to share it on our hmr.community support page. Um, wanted to just remind folks two weeks from today, it's February 24th, will be our next Facebook Live. And the event topic will be empowering perspectives in tough times. So we are wishing everyone a wonderful event and evening. And thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, bye everybody. Thank you, Barbara. Bye, thanks, it was great. All good, stay in the box. <laughs> <laughs> yes, stay in the box. <laughs>